Welcome back. Parliamentary Speaker Tandi Modise walked free this week after being charged with animal abuse after livestock had to be put down on a farm she owns. One of the issues raised in the case was who exactly was responsible for the well-being of animals, the farm owners or the workers? Well, Dr. Theo Deyaha of SAAI, the Southern African Agri Initiative, and Gerald Pappenfuss of the National Employers Association of South Africa join me now. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Dr. Deyaha, perhaps let's start with you. First, your reaction to the acquittal of the speaker. And secondly, you've raised some important points about accountability issues as it comes to cattle farming. Please unpack this for us. Yes, thank you, Marty. You have the privilege to talk in your, your newsroom. Um, farmers up to now understood that it is the owner of the farm or the owner of the livestock we, who will take primary responsibility for the welfare of animals and also who should be held accountable for it. Of course, no employer can be held responsible for what all these workers are doing all the time as long as they have put them um, in a position to do the job they have been given. And in this case, where in court it transpired that there was no food delivered on the farm, this worker, as the court um, heard, was in no position to feed the animals because there was no food for the animals. Um, and hence it came as quite a surprise when the, court, the, the case was thrown out of court. You see, at the end, um, the buck stops with the person who is in charge and who has command and control. And if you would have a situation where a farmer has 300 workers and they are co-responsible for the well-being of animals, where, where would you take the accountability to? It becomes an impossible situation, and I'm afraid based on on, on this um, decision of the court to throw the matter out, there's a lot of um, new rules that comes into play and w it causes uh, a lot of uncertainty in the sector. All right, we'll come back to the sector and just some of the uh, you know, policies that are in place to make sure that people are held accountable. But Mr. Papenfus, let me bring you into now. You, we've recently celebrated Workers' Day yesterday. And not too long ago, Human Rights Month. What has this case highlighted in terms of exploitation and also violations from a human rights perspective for you? Well, um, and we, we're talking about uh, the um, remuneration of the farm worker. Am I right, uh, Unati? You correct. Well, you know, uh, we as employers uh, are there to protect and assist and advise business, which, are, which includes farmers. And we've uh, expressed our concern in the past uh, about the minimum wage, uh, that perhaps in the rural areas it is very high and that uh, rural farmers and, 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 and upcoming farmers, small farmers can't necessarily pay that. But, but what I heard in this case, what was paid, to that particular father, farmer, and what I hear is that for that reason he left the farm at some point. If that if that is true, it's actually outrageous. You know, there's uh, there's one thing if a, if a business says uh, it doesn't make business sense to pay a particular wage on a particular level, or it's or it's or it's simply impossible. But you know. Uh, what happened in this case, if what I hear is true, that's outrageous. And, and, and it illustrates uh, a concerning attitude on the side of a politician, with, in this case, the Speaker of Parliament towards a worker. You know, it's one thing to introduce legislation and force it onto a country, and then you don't comply to it yourselves. So, um, uh, and, and, I, and I'm afraid there's a lot of legislation which uh, is, is, uh, is presented as legislation to protect workers, but in the end, it only protects a few. And in this case, you know, um, for this uh, polit political high flyer to, uh, to have done this is absolutely unjustifiable. Uh, nobody can live on a wage of that in a, in a faraway farm, far from everything, and then live with, uh, with a wage that simply nobody can live on. 
Now, Mr. Poppenfuss, uh, obviously this case highlighted just one incident, um, you know, in terms of exploitation of farm workers. But farm yeah. workers' exploitation has been something that's been going on for a very long time in South Africa. And most of the time, it's leveled at farm owners, predominantly white farm owners. Now, the question is, why is there noise around this particular case? Uh, and perhaps can you respond to that and also paint a picture for us in terms of how well are farm workers, um, uh, you know, paid at this point? Because we, I mean, we heard of that 30 rands per day in 2014 that this worker was being, was being paid. And, and that is um, a tragedy for, for, for the South African public. I mean, to, to listen to how this person was starving himself, um, one absolutely understands at the time that he had to leave um, that, that place of employment because you can't possibly survive on that little money. Let's, let's uh, uh, talk in, in, in general then uh, uh, about uh, farmers. You know, I think it has become a political slogan almost to say farm workers are abused because it's easy to say that. But if you go, go to farms, you will, will not really find it. And then, will be, you know, if you're talking about employees abusing workers, that will always be the, always be the, the you will find that always. But we're talking in general. You know, um, uh, very recently, and I think it was last week, a report was published that 50% of the South African population now goes hungry to bed. Uh, now, one thing about the farm workers, they never go hungry. They are always fed. They have a roof. All farmers, you can go to any farm. You will fa find that the farm workers have roofs over their head. They have, they, 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 they are fed. Uh, they school, the, the children are schooled with nearby, at nearby schools. And you must also remember that we're talking about employment of, of people in rural areas that if the, the lowest skilled workers, people with no skills at all, are accommodated on farms. So, you know, if you take in, into consideration all these elements and, 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 uh, and, and then there's the, 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 the notion that farmers are, uh, you know, making a lot of money to, to keep a farm running. And, um, and Mr. D Dr. Thierry Jager can uh, elaborate on that more. But to keep a farm or farming operation going is actually very tricky. Um, um, I've, I've got farming interests. My family are farmers. And I know that you need to work very wise with your with your financial uh, with with your finances to make this operation going so it is not in the heart of a farmer to abuse his workers it is not in the heart of an employer to abuse his workers um, but there are certain realities uh, on the farm you know if, if, if you're a farmer uh, a farm worker you get your you get a wage you don't pay a rent for your the place you live the water is, 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 in many cases, well, in all cases, will always be paid for. The electricity will be paid for. Everybody on that farm will be fed. There's a school nearby. And if you want to go to town, the farmers, most cases, take you to town. So, you know, if you compare that, what is happening in cities, in, uh, in, 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 in certain areas and cities where people live, you'll see the farm worker actually live very well. And that, so, you know, the notion of farmers abusing workers as a general notion is simply not true. All right, we'll continue about those abuses because uh, here at Newsroom Africa, we've just actually followed up on a case um, in, um, in Bumalanga, but we'll continue about that in a moment. Um, but I can certainly tell you from what we've been seeing, it's, it's, it's not a notion. But perhaps, uh, Dr. Diaha, if I can just bring you in, you, you mentioned that um, one of the things that stuck out about this particular case was the issue of accountability. So um, in your sector, what are the mechanisms that are in place to make sure that farmers are a, held accountable and also there is some level of, you know, monitoring what goes on in farms? Um, you know, again, I'm going to reference the fact that it has been, you know, said and suggested that the interest in this case is because it is political and racially motivated. So what mechanisms are there in the industry? And also maybe if you can touch on the fact that, you know, you've got almost like a holistic approach for every farmer and not just targeted farmers, as it were. 
You know, Nati, you must know the world became a very small place for farmers. We are all in competition with the best other farmers in the world all the time. And if you want to compete on the global markets, you have to abide by standards. Those standards are very, very strict. I cannot even start to tell you what the farmer goes through to make sure that he is certified to even export one fruit into Europe or into the USA. And when these inspectors come out to, to, to see if um, you meet all the criteria, more than half of those criteria has to do with workers, working conditions, protective clothing, training. Um, and, and if a country gets a bad reputation that the regulations which they have put in place are not being adhered to or um, that, that they are um, not uh, being checked, then you can lose your competitiveness. So that is why so many farmers across our country um, are upset about the way the rules are being applied. Because what's the message that goes out there? It is possible for you to have hundreds of, of, of animals dying of thirst and of hunger, um, and you can simply say, but it is the workers who did not do their job, and I did not even know that they are doing their job. So although there are regulations, even legislation in place, um, you, you cannot really be held accountable for that. It gives a bad reputation for the whole industry. Now that it is impossible for an industry as big as this one, which is boxing way above its league when it comes to job creation. We, 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 we although our, our contribution to the uh, gross um, national product is only 2.5%, we employ close to 11% of, of, of people in the rural areas um, on, on, in primary production, that is on farms. It is impossible to say that there is no abuse. It's impossible to say that all employers are keeping to the rules. But that is why we have um, the agencies who, who must make sure that the law is being enforced. So if we have a wide uh, spread abuse of farm workers, get those employers in front of a court. We don't see that. We have really for years not seen that in our courts. When it, do, it does transpire in courts, it is in a case like this one, where the, case, the, the court just threw everything out and there's a very, very clear case about abuse. There's no way you can justify paying a worker less than 25% um, of a, 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 a daily wage and then blame him for not doing his job by feeding the animals if there is no fodder on, on the farm. And, 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 and this is what is upsetting farmers. Um, it, is, it, it would be very sad if we add a race ticket to this because we have excellent black farmers and excellent white farmers too. And we have black and white farmers who are taking shortcuts. And they bring the whole industry into disrepute. I think what we hear most from the farmers um, uh, for, for the last two, three days since the, the court threw it out was to say, are our courts really above the, 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 the political, party political domain? Um, aren't they influenced by power and um, by by, by by politics, by party politics, and, 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 and this is what is upsetting. Dr. Uh, Dr. So Dr. perhaps the question then is, what is your industry going to do about it? I mean, what is the Southern African Agri Initiative as a start going to do about it? I mean, a lot of us remember those harrowing pictures of 2014 and subsequent culling of some of those animals um, in that particular farm. Um, if this is something that will hurt the industry from a reputation perspective, especially from a trade perspective, what is the industry going to do about it so that it never happens again? Well, I think there are three things which we have no choice of. First, we must get certainty about the rules. Uh, after this court case, there is a lot of uncertainty, and we, we need to restore certainty. Exactly what is the rules, and, and who should be held accountable, and how. 
Um, and, and it's not only our job. There are a number of NGOs, such as the SPCA and other uh, animal welfare organizations and groups. Um, and once we have that certainty, it is our absolute priority to restore the integrity of the industry on, 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 on two legs, both in terms of animal welfare, which is one of the most sensitive issues in global trade, and in terms of um, labor relations. Uh, the, the, the question would be, is it, how is it possible that um, you can get away with this kind of, of, of um, uh, 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 labor atrocities? And then thirdly, we must raise more awareness. Um, and then we, must, we need to do it in a partnership with consumers too, because ultimately consumers are determining what, how, uh, um, and where we, we, we farm. Um, so I think the consumer's voice will, on, in a, probably in a later stage, but it will, in this process, be one of the most important voices. Mr. Papenfuss, you represent the National Employers Association. Now, I know earlier you said that a lot of these cases are, you know, blown out of proportion and that farm workers are, uh, you know, relatively well looked after. They have roofs over their heads, etc. But we keep hearing, you know, these stories that are coming out of very remote areas. And we following up on a case um, at, at Museum Africa in Pumalanga, where farm workers are made to pay before they are even employed, and, and some are living in the most appalling of conditions. Now, as a National Employers Association of South Africa, when you hear of these kinds of incidences, what are you doing about it? You know, our, one of our roles is to advise employers and to assist them, and one of the elements against which we measure anything we do is what does the law says? What does it require? So that's the, that is a basic minimum. What does the law require? So um, when, when, when uh, you know, you cannot condone uh, abuse of a worker, never. So, you know, it is, it is a, it's a very general question. Our policy is in respect of any every employer and is is to treat your workers well i mean that is a that is a fundamental rule for business you cannot make progress if you abuse your workers so you know first of all the market dictates that and you know a, a, a farmer or any employer who's actually an abuser of workers won't become a member of the answer because i mean we represent you know solid businesses not that we will turn anyone away but people will come to us and say sisters and we advise them i mean good business practices include looking after your workers well so the abuse of a worker and and and, and certain atrocities that's committed you know we can we cannot condone it but but you know the, when when somebody breaks the law then then uh that, that the, the law has to take its course. Mm. Um, you know, we can advise, but we can't go beyond that. We can criticize, we can point out uh, what is not right, but then the law must take its course. But, you know, I think there's a percentage of, uh, if, if you look, if you uh, go out and look for farms where farmers are abusing workers, you will find that, of course. And, and if you want to focus on each one of them, and I don't think it's necessarily wrong, all right, All uh, I'm Mr. Saying, that is not the general picture. Mr. Papenfuss, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Of course, this case um, is going to be on appeal. Um, Afri Forum saying that they will definitely be appealing this Tandit Modise case. Well, um, I have to say thank you to Dr. Theo de Yaha from the Southern African Agri um, Initiative, as well as uh, Mr. Gerald Papenfuss. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen.